I done scrapped this video multiple times because I was trying to make sure I got my words right and everything. But this is going to be the final cut because the video is going too long and stuff. So I'm going to try to sim summarize and simplify things as much as possible and be very concise, okay? First off, I want to be clear. I think this game is good and fun for an anime game. For an anime game, this is high tier peak anime game. It's rare when we actually get a good one. I want to lay that out. I do enjoy this game. But this game needs a lot of improvement in a lot of areas and I want to keep it as real as possible if the game goes the way that it's going right now this game will be dead in a few months just like most anime games here go my points I'm gonna try to lay them out I'm not gonna go too much in depth if you don't understand what I'm talking about in this video Trust me, there are other content creators that went in depth already. You can go on Twitter and understand a bit more. And I dropped a video that say major issues in the game. If you need a more, more of a, uh, more of a, like a depiction of what I'm talking about. First thing first, the toxic community. I cannot explain how toxic this community is. I never met so many people that are condescending and have a guy complex in this community. I'm saying you can go to any content creator video and you're gonna find somebody hating in the comment section over nothing. Someone saying you're trash at the game. Someone saying, <laughs> actually, this was already in BT3. Y'all are late. <laughs> actually, this already worked. Did you not do the tutorial? <laughs> like, just all type of like know it alls, right? Not knowing that there are new gen people that never played BT3 or BT2 or BT1 in general that learning the game and these videos are helping them out. So it's kind of crazy to me that I'm finding so many of these these lanes on other people's videos. It's very toxic. Even people being hypocrites in the goddamn toxic community. How are you complaining about someone using Ultra Instinct Goku against Super Vegito, two high tier characters in the game, and trying to validate someone rage quitting? How are y'all saying this game's supposed to be unbalanced but then you taking away people's accolades and merits when they use a high tier character to get Z rank in this game. If y'all are saying characters should be unbalanced, y'all cannot say in the same sentence that these people don't deserve to get recognition for being Z rank because they use Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta or they use Vegito to get to Z rank. They they using the unbalanced system that y'all said y'all enjoy. Y'all said y'all don't want this game nerfing people and stuff. But then, y'all complain about people using unbalanced characters in the game. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. People are using the argument that, oh, the old BT3 game, they have patches and nerfs, so we don't need it for this one. Back then, nigga, they didn't have anything to do patches and nerfs. So that's not even a good argument. And I think the worst part is, is the fact that people say, don't sweat at this game. It's not competitive. Just have fun. But this is the same community that begged Bandai to add ranked battles in this game. What did you expect going to happen when you add rank inside a video game? It's going to have a competitive scene. And some people find competitive fun. So that's what they enjoy. And while they're playing competitive, they want certain things to be patched or nerfed because it truly is just unfair and broken in the game. That is a fair analysis from anyone. But I think the worst part of the toxic community is the ignorance. And if people don't know, ignorance is not a bad word. Ignorance is just a word for lack of knowledge. There are so many people that are giving their opinions about the game that know little to nothing about the game because they didn't play it enough, right? People are complaining about certain cheeses in the game. And you got people that's like in C rank and B rank and D rank trying to speak their opinion about the game's meta and saying it's not cheese just get good when they have no idea how annoying it is fighting against these cheeses when you get to high a rank s rank and z rank when that's all they do to get their wins and if you don't understand here go an example of people saying skill issue but not understanding how toxic it can really get broadly with the ski the key blast spam ultimate y'all done seen it plenty of times already some people say oh the counter to that is just deflect but then people not understand the only high tier care high tier people understand that deflecting in this game puts you in a non-vanished state. You're stuck in a deflect animation. Meaning when you're deflecting key blasts, you can't move. Your character do not auto-correct and it's not considered as a block. So when someone like Broly is doing that, they can A, wrap around you and hit you with key blast, make you take more damage, 
or B, just use his ult and you can't vanish. And we already know it's unblockable. So you're just hit because you're stuck in a deflect animation. And this goes with the whole flying around while deflecting as well. When you're in a deflect animation in this game, you cannot vanish. Okay? So then the other people counter measure was just revenge counter. If Broly keeps a certain distance, you cannot revenge counter a key blast. I repeat. If Broly keep a certain distance, you cannot revenge counter a key blast. And even if you do, it is easy to counter. The moment he see you do the animation for revenge counter, he can just hold circle, counter it. You lost resources. He just countered your, your freaking revenge counter. And now he's still finna use O on you. So it is one of those things in the game that is legit broken. And there's plenty of people that can do this. B Riss, Jiren, anybody that's high tier dp and and got an unblockable okay that's broken super vegeto and then i'll get off of this there's a lot of cheeses in this game i'm not gonna go in depth look at other people's videos i don't want the video being too long super vegeto people say key blast is the counter yeah it is right but after image strike but what if vegeto go max power then what, what are you gonna do then key blasts don't work and now you're at a disadvantage for 15 seconds and keep in mind, sparking stays on for 18 seconds, meaning they hold time while they inside sparking. You can't really do anything. They finna rush you down, and you just gotta sit there and look stupid, wasting your key and stuff, trying to vanish for them and whatnot. Another thing is, what if he just aggro on you aggressively? You can't throw key blast if he keep getting in your face and applying that pressure if he's a really good player. So there are certain game things in the game people say skill issue get good when it's like when you're going against a skilled player at the game there's no such thing as skilled issue you're not getting around that it's just a very cheesy strat that carries them same thing with the kepler thing sometimes you can block it the oak when they wrap around you sometimes you sometimes you just can't you just get hit by it. but i digress i hate that about toxic community because it's one thing about lacking the knowledge and trying to understand and there's one thing about lacking the knowledge and then still being dense and ignorant it's, it's ridiculous that's like Yajirobe. Everybody understood Yajirobe eating the sensor beam. The whole par problem with him was the speed of eating the sensor beam. Take like two seconds. The moment he went any vantage war and send you flying, he's eating that sensor beam. It's a wrap. It's done. You're done. He get a full health back. So I don't understand why people don't understand. There's a difference between having unbalanced characters in the game, like Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta against Hercule. Clearly unbalanced, reasonable. Compared to unbalanced in the game, as in it's just god awful, boring, and broken. Because a person is cheesing something that is hard to actually overcome because of how the game is set up. People in the community are threatening people. People over, over here talking about some do ban for ban. Y'all know what clip I'm talking about. People over here sending threats inside people DMs, the hate messages, and the and the rage quitting, and the like. What is going on here? What what is going on? But I think the main thing that's gonna be the real downfall of this game is the rose tinted glasses. Get out the honeymoon phase, guys. Get out the nostalgia base, bro. Look at this game objectively and stop being on Dragon Ball Sparking Zero's tip. Stop riding that mud. Stop drooling on it. Golly. The game is not perfect. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. I'm saying that again. It's not perfect. If this didn't have the name Dragon Ball Z attached to it, I promise you. I promise you. If this was any other game, you would have heard the community resounding together saying this game is trash when it comes to the, the mechanics in the game, the cheeses and the bugs and stuff. Y'all would be yelling to the top of y'all lungs on Twitter and stuff about the issues with this game. But because it has Dragon Ball Z attached to it and people are so thirsty for Budokai Tekachi 3 to come back and stuff, people are trying to ignore the issues with this game when this game has a lot of issues in it. That's gonna be the downfall of this game. Bugs, poor optimization and issues. Again, I don't wanna go too much in depth into it, Look at someone else's video. Look at my major issues video. Or this video gonna be long. This video will be like an hour long of me going into the detail of everything wrong here. One, the classic and standard control issues. It should not be acceptable for a game to launch and people get online and they buttons are swapping because two people on different goddamn uh, control schemes. It makes no sense that a person that's on classic control can't swap characters because they're going against somebody that's using standard control. It makes no sense that a classic control user is going max power and then they're not able to use their O or any of their supers. It makes no sense that, and they said they fixed this before, this just made even more bugs in the game. It shouldn't make no sense that a classic control person pull out their super menu and they got the same button layouts and they can't use one of their supers for the whole entirety of the match. 
ruining the game the gameplay style. It makes no sense that people characters just fall out of combos too much in this game for no reason. It makes no sense that people can do perception by smash mashing the goddamn perception button so much in this game when someone's in the middle of a combo stream. It makes no sense that people are getting untracked on people when they're in the middle of the combo. And you know what I'm talking about. You're hitting them with your combos and then your character just start punching the air on a different axis of the Z-axis, whatever. And now your opponent gets taken advantage of that because for some reason your character not locking on to your opponent. The lock on system in this game, god awful. It shouldn't be the fact someone used me a user oat on me and I see them right in my face and my character still not lock on to them. Someone used instant transmission. I'm dashing. I see them in front of me and my character still not locking on to them. It makes no sense that people are trying to use their supers and stuff in this game, but because they put the input in too quick, now the game got them throwing key blasts, got them trying to do the grab command, trying to got them punching the air. That makes no sense. This game for console shouldn't have launched with input delay. It's a damn shame how slow my characters punch with the input delay on console that my ish is not resting the combos that I'm typing in and the sways I'm trying to do, which ruining my matches online. I'm dealing with input delay and laggy servers. Even though I say connecting with people with four internet bar and higher, I'm still dealing with horrible lag and matches with people. That is that's ridiculous. That is ludicrous. There's a rare bug online if the lag is so bad, you can't super counter, you can't revenge counter, you can't vanish. You just gotta sit there and take that L. Why is that bug in the game? And there are plenty of more bugs in the game that y'all are aware of that y'all went through that I'm pretty sure y'all done complained about, okay? And Bandai had done nothing about it yet. They have not focused on it yet. They 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 focused on something like nerfing Yajirobe when there are way more apparent game breaking things in the game that need to be fixed. The queue times with the servers. I'm on PS5 console. It's taking me like three to five minutes to find a match on console. When the game first came out, it was taking like probably like 15 seconds, maybe five seconds and stuff. Now that the game came out longer now, now I got some, some period of time now, it's taking like three to five minutes to find a match. And and I'm not doing no rage quit anything. I just not finding matches. Xbox servers, it's taking them like 30 minutes to find a match. They still dealing with server issues over there. PC is the only, only freaking console so far. PC is the only platform where there's no input delay. They finding matches quick, it's less lag, what is going on here? Why a game that knew they're gonna have rage, uh, rage quitters in it, cause they added rank matches in it. Why did a game launch with no penalties towards rage quitters? Like, huh? Like, like what? What? Like, like, are y'all drunk? I ain't trying to be too, too like mean or anything. I'm trying to be very objectively here, but the simplest option would have been if someone DC a rage quit, they automatically lose the match. And the person that's still there that didn't that didn't DC, they get their win points. Super simple. If someone DC on accident, sorry to break it to you, get your internet better. Lock, lock in. Get your internet provider up. Get off that McDonald's internet, bro. Get your LAN cable in, bro. Like that is way more of a solution than sitting here and letting rage quitters still rage quit to this day and no penalties happening. Y'all say y'all gonna do a permanent ban for people that rage quit a lot. Y'all say people gonna have longer matchmaking queues if they rage quit, but none of that's happening. People are still getting away with it and nothing is happening at all. The gameplay mechanics. I don't know what to say about this. Could this a 50-50 here? But I'm gonna give my opinion on why I think personally this gameplay mechanic is gonna make the game die quick. They added super counter in the game from the old BT, BT series. But it is way easier to prop super counter in this game than the old BT series. Even the one of the best skilled players in this game, Sparking Zero, that was a pro player in BT3, even said super countering is way easier in this game compared to the old BT3 that anybody can do it. You even got average casual players being able to super counter because they mashing the button. Even a pro player said, mashing the button gives you a Z counter, a super counter. There's no skill to it. The window for vanishing, Z counter, vanishing, too open. Anybody can do it. When you get high in the ranking, 
sometimes even lower in the ranking. That's all you see 24 7. A vantage war, non stop, and a person that gets the most key wins, and then a super counter that leads into another vantage war, and then a super counter that leads into a vantage war, and then a super counter that leads into a vantage war. It gets boring. It gets boring. Why did they launch super counter with no for free with no resource use? Most fighting games has a win con of how you can punish your opponent. If your opponent got less meter or something, you get to punish them. Naruto Storm is a good example. You have four substitution bars. If you was better than your opponent mixing them up and stuff, you was able to waste a sub bar and then you was able to punish them with your combo strings. Xenoverse, if you was able to break your opponent's stamina, you was able to hit them for combo string. And there's other god dang arena fighter games that I can say this. In the OBT and Raging Blast, key was your defense. If that was going, you couldn't vanish or anything. This game, you can super counter whenever. Whenever. Huh? The solution to this should have been that super counter uses a blast stop or a skill gauge, whatever word you want to use. That would have been the solution here. So then it would have been like, if it's going to be so free in this game, then at least it uses resources so people can still get punished in this game because of how quick skill gauge comes back. It made revenge counter counter irrelevant in this game. I'm going to be honest. To be honest, I would have been okay with the game just having revenge counter with no super counter. Because then I would have knew if they got no skill gauge, I can punish them. If they got a skill gauge, they can revenge counter me. And then I would have dropped the revenge counter from one bar to, instead of two bar. So then you would have had a back and forth fight of people getting skill gauge and you revenge counter to break combo strings and whatnot. But no, they didn't do that. They, they didn't think that one through. Same thing with Vanishing. Vanishing is so easy in this game. I don't know why they didn't do like the old Dragon Ball Z games where every time you vanish, the 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 window for vanishing gets smaller and smaller and it speeds up the, the process of the vanish war and then it really shows skill because now it's reaction time whoever pressing it faster and faster and faster and faster and faster this game it stays the same speed the same window frame stays open it's ridiculous it's ridiculous Th there's so much there's so many things wrong with the game the game mechanics even getting skill gauges from getting beat up and losing a health bar and getting skill gauge from vanishing and super countering all day Skill gauges are too plentiful and bountiful in this game. I know why they wanted you to have a lot of it because it's like they're gonna be revenge countering, but no, people are super countering. Revenge counter is very rare, so it's just too much of abundance of skill gauge. I would take the catch up system out the game and make it that skill gauges go up a more fixed amount so that people can't spam skills all day to win matches. It's a dang shame someone can use the old then use the skill to go back max power again and then use the and win the match without ever throwing a punch there are plenty of matches i got in i'm whooping the opponent ass and then literally because i'm whooping the ass they got six skills blast stocks whatever they win one advantage for me to send me flying which get enough time to go max power can't do nothing about it and then boom they hit me for an uh, 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 ultimate cheese whether it's the key blast broly or it's the catholic getting behind you they use some type of cheese oh ultimate move you I'm locked off, trash lock off system, and then they go max power again because I'm trying to lock on back to them, and then they just go right back and ultimate me again because I'm still locked off, and then I lose. It's a shame. The game mechanic needs some improvement. It gets very boring and dull very fast, especially if you're playing ranked battles. It's a dang shame in this game that people are hitting S rank and Z rank and then saying, I'm not touching rank no more. I'm satisfied. If people are done playing rank after they hit a certain threshold, that lets you know the game gets boring and, uh, and aggravating as you get higher into the ranks. You see the same character, you see the same cheese, and it's not fun. It's a dang shame people are staying in B rank on purpose. Staying in B rank on purpose because they know in B rank, people are still playing with average characters and having fun at the game and they get to see a variety of characters used and fighting each other and don't have to worry about rage quitters. You, you see more rage quitters in S rank and Z rank compared to any rage quitters you see in B rank and below. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Rank should have had a balanced system where everybody does the same damage and have the same health so that people can still see all characters being used in the game at higher ranks so then you can see who's the best Bardock player, who's the best Frieza player, who's the best Goku player, so you can still see that stuff. Now, you can't even see that stuff. It's just everybody cheesing, and then people rage quitting, so you don't even know who actually Z rank. I default 
ranked 24 in the world on console with Z-Rain. I done fought ranked 16 in the world. I done fought ranked 32. And I had beat all of them. And all of them was just trying to use a cheesy strat. So you don't even know who actually the good people in the goddamn game. You truly don't. Rank is irrelevant in this game. Last but not least. Content. This game, in my opinion, lacks content. And I'm not gonna try to hang on this too long. Cause this video this video gonna be long regardless. I've been I just did down, it's still gonna be long. Content. After you beat the story mode, which I truly believe they was very lazy and half ass on the story. I don't care if people said they done played the Dragon Ball story plenty of time. This is the first Dragon Ball game for us to enjoy the Dragon Ball Super Arts with Goku Black, with Tournament Power, etc. Dragon Ball Kakarot did not do this. They went to only Dragon Ball Z and then they touched on like what, Revenge of Frieza. I wanted to see PS5 graphic, new gen graphic story mode of Dragon Ball Z all the way to Dragon Ball Super with beautiful goddamn graphics, cinematics. I don't care if they even did QTEs on some Cyber Connect 2 type ish with Kakarot and, and Naruto Storm. I wanted to see that ish and get hyped. And I'm pretty sure there's some other Dragon Ball fans that agree with me. The what if sagas are cool in this game, but I do not agree with the PowerPoint slash show cutscenes. I do not agree with the lack of animation rigging. I went to gaming school and stuff. I do not appreciate the animation, lack of animation rigging on the characters. And the only thing you see is them doing some robotic walking and crap. And then only their mouth is moving, barely any facial expressions, barely any body movement animations and rigging. It was lazy. Okay? It was lazy. Now, after you do story in this game, the only area you can go to in this game is the customized the customizable battles and rank. I already told you guys, high rank in this game is toxic. Most people are quitting rank after they hit Z rank and S rank. They're not going back in that ish because it's not fun. It's toxic, cancerous, and frustrating. It's aggravating, okay? The player, uh, the casual player list for uh, q and with just casual play sucks in this game. You got to make a room or join a lobby, or join a room or whatever. Why isn't it just casual matchmaking like rank where you just go in that mug and you just wait for them to match with somebody that's in casual? Fix that. that. That's horrible game layout design. That's just horrible. But after you, if you don't care about rank, because you want to have fun playing the game, and you're done with the story, the only thing left you got is customizable battles. And I'm going to be honest, customizable battle. I do legit, this is a legitimate question. Answer it down below, below. I'm not trying to ridicule anybody. This is the legit question. Who is playing custom battles in this game? Be honest. I only went in there once. Right? There's a saying where if there's too many options, humankind are man, are known for not making an option, making a decision because there's too many options. I feel like you don't know what's good and what's bad when you go to custom about customized battles. You go in there and it's either you do a match and it's like this was super easy. There were no really story explanation. This was pretty dry and boring. And then you got the ones where it's like they just make a very souped up boss that keep regenerating their health back and giving them broken buffs. And now I'm playing a simulator of me trying to spam my ultimate move nonstop until I finally kill the person. Not really fun. There is a rare few on there where it's like this person spent their actual time making a good, blessed out story dialogue with like like the actual like obt3 click the r3 to trigger a event and everything there are some people that actually put a lot of love and passion in their guide and customized battles which i respect and enjoy but that's about it that's about it right it's hard to even make a customized battle because the the way they make you decide how to how to pick dialogue choices is very very aggravating it should be way simpler than that but i digress right but then you got the weird guy in custom model battles, like Roshi taking everybody girl. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Or Goku having an affair with Kefla. What the F? There are a lot of weird crap on there too. So how many of y'all actually in custom model battles? Cause when I grew up playing BT2 and BT3 and Rage and Blast, there were other game modes for offline PVEers to enjoy besides having to go online and play something. Where is the Mission 100? Where there was 100 missions 
of made up teams and stuff that you had to challenge yourself to beat them with your one person and the difficulty goes higher and higher as you get higher and longer into the mission list where are these things where, where are they for me to enjoy some pve stuff what about the dragon sim some of y'all probably know what that is some of y'all don't what about the chlorine tower you climb the tower on some mortal combat type if you keep finding opponents see how high you can go on top of the tower with survival like where the survival play modes there's a lot of pve game modes that's not in the game that should have launched with the game like in bt3 and stuff is it gonna come with dlc maybe but if dlc only comes with new characters and nothing else this game gonna die quick people gonna get if they don't patch things in the game people gonna get tired of the bugs in the game People gonna get tired of the rank toxic rank battles going with the same people over and over again, the same cheese over and over again. It's not fun. I like I like to see diversity. I'm pretty sure a lot of people like to see diversity in characters too. I went there with Super Saiyan Goku recently, and I had fun beating these fusions and stuff. But I'm be honest, it was a lot. I started off start, started the video with high energy, and did the video with low energy. You probably seen the gameplay and the footage of me fighting against them. It, 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 it's not as fun as the people try to make it seem to be. In costumes, what's what's the lack of it? What's the lack of it? You add a scouter and, and Halo in the game. But it can only be put on the characters that had a Halo and Scouter before in the game and a power pose. Why? If this was supposed to be an online game for us to be able to customize our main characters, why is it that only the people that have war before in the, in the canon story and stuff is the only ones to be able to do it? I should be able to put a goddamn Scouter on my hit and, and, and a power pole on my hit if I want to, okay? I should be able to do some ish like that just so my character, my main, can can stand out. I should be able to do that. But also, too, the lack of creativity in the costumes. Everybody begged for the jackets that Goku and Vegeta wore during the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. Everybody begged for that costume to be in the game. Why is it not in the game? Why has the mod community got to take over for you guys when the community clearly spoke their voice before the game dropped? Why is the iconic pink shirt Batman Vegeta outfit not in the game? Why is there no alternate colors in the game? So when I'm fighting a, 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 a Duke mirror match, we don't we look the same, having problems keeping track of who's who. These are certain things that should have been in the game at launch. Just certain things, man. Certain things. Even the training mode. The training mode is so dense. It's ridiculous. Even the battle training with Piccolo. Why did y'all not have a, a actual training mode in there for Sonic Sway or deflecting super blasts and stuff in melee? Some people don't even know you can deflect a guy named Super Melee. It's just it's the same button like deflecting the Kame Kamehameha. Uh, Kamehameha. You just hold the perception button when you got two skill gauges, right? You can do that too if, if someone throw like a meteor smash or it's an impact at you. As long as you got two skill gauges, why is this stuff lacking in the training mode? Like these are certain things we gotta be honest about and speak up in the community instead of keeping these rose tinted glasses on. These are not quality of life type ish, okay? These are things that should have been in the game. In the game at launch. And some of this stuff feels like, hey, maybe Spark and Zero needed an extra year of development to optimize some things. Maybe it needed that. So I wanna say all in all in this video, I feel like if the game continues with these issues, this game is going to die all in all in a few months, right? People are already making videos complaining about the cheese, complaining about the, the race quitters, complaining about the, the bugs and the glitches with the button layouts and stuff, the servers. People are complaining about all of these things and the developers, the first patch they did was just to nerf Yajirobe and to fix one issue with the classic and standard issue but they still there they should attack way bigger and way more issues in that short time period but let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below i think the only way to save this game is if people are brutally honest and take the rose tinted glasses off and say with their chest what's wrong with the game instead of being afraid of the white knights in the community being blinded and lying about this game is perfect when it's not it's far from it these are the same people that made jump force jump force launched with the same issues same cheeses same server issues same rage quit issues jump force launched with the same issues okay 
if you don't speak up this gonna be a jump force part two situation where people leave the game later on because things are not changing quick enough because people aren't being honest about the game so make sure y'all honest about the game speak it with your chest don't worry about people saying that's the only way the game gonna be fixed if the if you don't tell the developers there's something wrong with the game they ain't gonna think it's something wrong with their game y'all all spent 70 plus dollars on this game all the way to the hundreds okay some of y'all bought it on multiple platforms this game as a consumer deserves your opinion to be improved so don't be afraid to do that just because you're a fan of dragon ball you have a voice speak up so this game can be fixed i enjoy this game but i will enjoy it a lot more if these issues were solved and the community was way healthier let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below love you guys appreciate you guys always and until next time stay up